Hello, Greg. Hello, Wendy. Let's pause the I'm going to take a moment and bow in. And so you can see, for those of you who haven't been um, in this before, um, O Sensei is behind me. So I'm going to start with a moment. And we're going to start with the warm ups, and I'm going to narrate the warm ups more than I would in a regular class. So let's just take a moment and let the earth support us, and let the sky support us, and just stand held between heaven and earth. And now let's dip down, take a breath up from the earth, and bring it up and open. Long exhale. And again, dipping down. Drawing it up from the earth to the sky, expanding. And this time reaching out through the walls. And then let's wake our core up a little bit. A good old Aikido padding that we do here. And then let's, if you want to, I'm going to make my legs and my knees up a little bit, bring some energy there, torso, chest, adding along my arms, get some energy going there, shoulders. And going back down to the Hara area, getting that going and then stopping for a moment and let's focus a point in the middle of our Hara. And we'll work with our containment breath as we inhale, gather, let it build in the hara, and slow exhale. Collecting in the hara, sense the potential power there. Let it build and slow exhale. And one more. Focusing into the hara and slow release. Nice, and then let's begin to move from there and let's keep our heads straight ahead as we turn so we have more of a sense that it's the hips that are moving the arms. And then try to imagine the energy flowing out through the arms and the fingertips Think of it as light and imagine that it touches the walls or goes through the walls. And just let the energy radiate out into the world. Let it flow through you. Nice, and now let's bring that to a close for a moment and let's just enjoy that feeling of aliveness around us. And let's stretch our sides a little bit. So. We'll take a nice long exhale, let the side energy stretch. And we'll do the other side. And again. And then let's go all the way around three times without reversing, just go and get some momentum there. Woo, yes. And now reverse at the bottom. And three times around the other way. All right. Now let's stretch our low backs. So let's drop a shoulder in and turn all the way to the back wall and then inhale to center and drop the other shoulder in Stretching all the way around. Again, dropping that shoulder in. Let your eyes go as far as they can. And the center. And drop the other shoulder in. Nice. And let's work the hips a little bit now. So as we make circles with the hips, even using our thumbs and the low back a little bit to massage those back muscles, and then reverse. Let's go the other way. Nice. 
And now let's work our knees a little bit. So circles with the knees, one way. And then circles with the knees the other way. And stretching the backs of the knees. And then if you're comfortable with it, you can squat and stretch the backs of the knees again. And then one more squat and stretching the back of the knees. Okay, let's put our left foot forward and let's do our Ikkyo warm up. And as we begin to do this Ikkyo warm up, really let the pressure that you're applying to the wrists flow through your arm, your body, all the way into the earth. So let your body take that pressure. And now let's hold the pressure and uplift your posture, strong hips, let's open our hearts. Nice. Change hominy, let's do the other side. And as we do this, don't forget to really let the pressure on your wrists move into your arm, your torso, your legs, so your whole body absorbs and is energized by the pressure of the stretch. And then hold, and then settle in, relaxing behind the stretch. Nice, let's change and move the Kodagaish. And as we stretch with Kodagaish, the same thing, allowing the energy of the stretch to flow through our arms, through our torso, legs, up out the top of the head, absorbing, energizing that pressure, and then hold. And as we hold the stretch, relax the body around the stretch. Nice, let's change and do the other side of the Kota Gaish. And so as we're stretching, not too fast, really letting the energy move through us. Really using the stretch to absorb and energize. And now let's hold. And again, keeping the stretch on, relaxing the body as much as we can around the stretch. Nice. Now let's do Nikyo. And as we work the Nikyo stretch, once again, letting the energy of the pressure that we're applying to the wrist flow up the arm, through the torso, down through the legs, up out the top of the head, absorbing the energy of the stretch. And then hold, and then soften around the stretch. Nice, let's do the other side of our Nikyo. And just letting the body move a little bit with the Nikyo. Try not to just be totally still. Try to let the pressure of the Nikyo move the body, affect the body. The body accepts it. And then hold and soften. Nice. And now let's stretch the inside of our arms since some of us have been working at the computer. This is a good one. And just letting all of that nice exhale happen with your stretch. And on the other side. And one more. Nice. Now let's shake them out. And now when we shake them over our heads, shake in such a way that your body, whole body trembles. You're just moving that body energy throughout your whole body, your feet, your toes are trembling, your legs, your torso, really shake it. Shake it a little bit more, a little stronger. Beautiful, let them fall three times. And let's do that again. Shake it, shake the whole body, let it shake and tremble energy moving and flowing through us, alive in our feet, legs, torso, go for it. A little bit more. Nice, and then let them fall three times. And now let's stretch the shoulders a little bit, moving the arms around, and the shoulders themselves. And then working the shoulders one in, one out, and then you can reverse, letting it move through your whole body. All right, so we're gonna work our triangle. And if those of you who are new to it, the triangle is gonna really extend out. 
Imagine it extends through the far wall. And also imagine that your back is open and you can invite Aiki spirit to flow through you, through your arms, through your fingers and touch the far wall. Be sure that front knee is a little bit bent. So the energy is coming from your knees, your toes, your fingertips, and your body is a flow through. All right, let's go together and back. Together and back. Together and back. Together and back. Keep moving. And as you move, invite a little more energy to flow through you. Imagine it's flowing through you like a breeze at your back and it flows through your arms and your fingertips and out and touches the far wall. So you're part of the bigger flow of Aiki spirit coming through you. And then try to think a little bit of heaven and earth flowing through you. Energy from way above in the sky coming all the way down through your feet, from the earth moving all the way up through your head. You're porous, not solid. Beautiful, and hold. Just take a moment and stand in that. Keep your fingers extended, your arms extended for just a minute. Just feel that life flowing through you. All right, let's do our two-step. Keep the energy extending out your fingers in one, two, one, two. Keep going as you turn. Sense that there's a breeze at your back. It's energy, it's Aikido spirit, and it's moving you with, with ease. And all around you, there's energy. In your body, you're vibrating energy, nothing more than that. And then think of heaven and earth running through you. Imagine there's a spiral going all the way up to the sky, a spiral coming all the way down from the sky into the earth, and it's running through your being. Fingertips with lights in them. Let it get a little brighter, a little stronger. A couple more. And let's turn and stay for a moment. And as we stay, let's just stand in it and let that lightness float up through the top of our head, also down through our feet. We're part of something much bigger, like a double helix that's flowing through us. Lights in our fingertips, really let it go out. See, you experience yourself as part of a flow of vibrating energy flowing through you. Okay, um, as always is my habit, I'm going to read you something. This one is not an Osensei quote. This is one of my favorite poems. It's called Cutting Up an Ox. And some of you may know it, but I'm going to read it again because it has to do with blades and cutting. And I thought we'd work this evening with the uh, Yokominuchi Shihonage. So that's a very blade like technique. Prince Wei, when Hui's cook was cutting up an ox, out went a hand, down went a shoulder. He planted a foot, pressed with a knee. The ox fell apart with a whisper. The bright cleaver murmured like a gentle wind. Rhythm, timing, like a sacred dance like the mulberry grove, like ancient harmonies. Good work, the prince exclaimed. Your method is faultless. Method, said the cook, laying aside his cleaver. What I follow is the Tao beyond all methods. When I first began to cut up oxen, I would see before me the whole ox, all in one mass. After three years, I no longer saw this mass. I saw the distinctions, but now I see nothing with my eye. My whole being apprehends. My senses are idle, the spirit free to work without plan, follows its own instinct, guided by natural line, by the secret opening, the hidden space. My cleaver finds its own way. I cut through no joint, I chop no bone. A good cook needs a new chopper once a year, he cuts. A poor cook needs one every month, he hacks. I have used the same cleaver 19 years. 
It has cut up a thousand oxen. Its edge is as keen as if newly sharpened. There are spaces in the joints. The blade is thin and keen. And when this thinness finds that space, there is all the room you need. It goes like a breeze. Hence, I had this cleaver 19 years as if newly sharpened. True, there are sometimes tough joints. I feel them coming. I slow down. I watch closely. Hold back. Barely move the blade. And whoom, the part falls away, landing like a clod of earth. Then I withdraw the blade. I stand still and let the joy of the work sink in. I clean the blade and put it away. And my favorite line from this poem is, when this thinness finds that space, there is all the room you need. Okay, so let's begin our practice with imagining Yokomanuchi Shihonage. So we've been working a lot with imagination. And I want to remind everyone, as I have done the last few weeks, we will be working with the Ukemi side as well. And I'll say it again, you're only as good as your uke. I don't care how wonderful an Aikidoist you are, if you have a terrible uke, you won't look good. And if you have a good uke, you can be a klutz and you look great. So we want to be sure that we're honoring the Ukemi side as well. First, though, we're going to work with the Nage side. So what I'd like us to do is I'd like us to imagine that Yokumin is coming. In this case, it's coming to my uh, left side. And what I'm going to do is I have my left foot forward. When that comes, I'm going to bring both my sword blades up, okay, and step back. So let's do that together. You're going to step forward with your right foot and bring both your sword blades up. And as you do that, really work this thing with your wrists. It's, it's that feeling. That's what you want to work. So what we're going to do is step forward and bring that up. And let's do that again. As we step forward and come up from our hara and make that shape with our hands, we imagine that in this case, my right hand is right on my partner's center and my left hand is connected to that strike right in the, the elbow area or maybe a little bit further down. Okay. Then what I'm gonna do is sweep my left foot back and I'm gonna draw my partner to my left leg and that will bring my partner around to my side. Now I'm gonna step through, turn and cut. And when I cut, try to remember the poem when this thinness finds the space. Make your throw a nice beautiful cut that your uke can just follow. So let's do that a couple more times and then we'll do the other side. So stepping forward with the right foot, my hand comes up making that shape. Center line. This is just um, connecting to that strike so it doesn't hit me, right? Then the left foot's gonna sweep back. I'm gonna draw both hands, stay up nice and straight. <laughs> nice and straight. My partner will have come around to my side. I step through, pivot, make a nice cut. And when you make a cut, really send the energy out so you're Uke has something to roll on. Don't lean forward and push them down. In this variation, it's just a nice cut out. All right, let's try the other side. So I'm going to imagine the strike is now coming to my right side. I'm going to step forward and I'm going to make that same shape. So that shape, sorry, that shape is that my, in this case, my left hand is really on their center. My right hand is just touching that other. And so I really want people to work that feeling in their hands. This, you can watch a lot of the shihan, this movement right here, there's that extension there. So that's what you want to work when that strike is, imaginary strike is coming. So that imaginary strike is coming, I step with my left, this hand is coming to the center, this hand is, the Right hand is right by my partner's elbow, and I'm gonna sweep my foot back, bring them to this part of my hip, my right hip, step through, turn, and cut. When I cut, remember, step straight and send the energy out. Okay, let's do that again, and a little bit 
um, with a little bit faster. So here comes the strike. I step in, center line, catching that arm, sweep back around, step through, turn, and cut. Okay, I'm gonna step back a little bit. Maybe you can see a better. So imagine it's coming to your left side again. So step in, boom, both hands come up. Sweep back around, step through, pivot, cut, send the energy out. Stand up nice and straight. Good, now imagine it's coming to your right side. So you step in, center hand to the center, bring it down to your right hip, step through, turn, cut. So the idea is when I'm stepping through, it's like raising a sword and I pivot and I just make that nice cut. We're gonna be working with the bow can a little bit later. And so we'll look at that idea of raising the sword, pivot, cut. Raising the sword, pivot, cut. That's something that if we practice with our bow cans, when we go to do shihonagi with a partner at some point in our future, we'll be better instead of grabbing the wrist and turning underneath and struggling with it, we simply raise our sword, pivot, and cut. Let's work a little bit on the uke side. So I'm gonna start with my right hand. I'm gonna imagine that my nage is in front of me. With my right leg, I'm gonna step in and I'm going to strike right along the line of their uh, gi. And this hand is always, in this case, the left hand is always just present to the centerness of it. So remember the line, when this thinness finds the space, there is all the room you need. So when you make this yokuman cut, see if you can really have a sense of throwing the energy out there and having that precise thin line that's right where you need to go. Now your partner's gonna drop your wrist into their leg and that's gonna make you pivot around. And then they're gonna come up and they're going to pivot and that's where you're gonna take your fall. Let's work again on that strike. Yokoman is not an easy strike to do. Now the left side. So as it comes up, I step in and I cut right for that line, the same line as their gi. And my right hand is really present, covering that center. Nice. Then I imagine that they take my hand and they pull it and that's gonna make me sweep my leg around. So I stay up straight. When they drop my hand down, I don't lean over with it. They drop my hand down, I stay up straight, push my hips forward and as I do that, that spins me around. Now my hand's gonna, they're gonna bring my hand up over my head and back behind. So let's do that a couple of more times for the ukemi, starting with the right hand, step, cut. Imagine they, as they bring my wrist to their center, it sweeps my foot around. I'm extended here. I stay up, I'm leaning into it. I'm not gripping the ground, I'm actually light. Light so that they can throw me easily and they're gonna bring my arm up and my backfall is gonna happen. So the whole thing about a kemi is not to plant, not to lean forward, not to pull in, but to give ourselves. So if I'm doing it again with my right hand, I'm gonna cut. And then as they bring my hand around, I'm gonna sweep around and stay up and lean back. That will pull me back a little bit. Now it comes up over my head and they take my arm. So what I want us to pay attention to in the ukemi is to avoid planting as they bring my hand down and avoid leaning over. But as I strike, I imagine that I'm sweeping around and I'm staying upright and I'm leaning and I'm opening. This hand is like wings or flaps. It's not collapsed, it's open. Let's strike with our left hand. Go ahead, strike. Let yourself swing around. Give your body, they're gonna take your wrist and bring it up. All right, let's go back over Nage one more time. Here comes uh, the, stress, the strike, it's coming to my left side. So I'm gonna step in, cut, swing around. Now this is the sword coming up over my head. And then I'm just gonna pivot and cut. And now it's gonna come to my left side. So as it comes to my left side, I step in, same. This hand comes up, always this movement with the wrists. Right? And then cutting around. 
and then they're to my side, step through, cut. Again, now it's coming to the other side. <laughs> Sorry, other side, step in, and that feeling of really working the wrists as we extend into it, bringing that right down, and I bring it right to my hip. So here's the thing, if I bring it to my center, my uke will crash into me. Instead, what I want to do is bring it to this hip. What that does is it makes uke spiral around so they come to the outside of me. So that's something that we sometimes do is when we're taking their yokum and strike, you pull it in here and then uke comes in here. Instead, what I encourage you to do is bring it out around and to your hip. So it's like a cut that goes around there. And then uke can come around here to the side. That makes it really easy for you to turn and cut. And then let's just go over the ukemi one more time. So I'm nice and light and upright. I'm not going to be heavy and grab the earth. I'm going to give my body. As I step in and strike, my nage takes my strike and it spins me around so that I'm light, leaning back. My arm is extended, right? I'm not forward. I'm back. Then they're going to come through and take my wrist. Let's work on the other side. Here comes that nice strike. Good, precise cut. And then they take my hand, bring it around, and I swing back so that I'm leaning back and I'm open. So it, it's not a tightness, it's an openness. I give them my arm, they take that arm, and I break my balance backward. So as you know, um, I like to stop after working with the technique a little bit and have um, any questions, any insights, any thoughts, and particularly for people about what might this mean in terms of conversations you would have with yourself or with someone off the mat? How does our Aikido practice inform how we speak, how we think, how our, how our conversations are? So um, you can unmute yourself, I believe, if you don't know how, wave your hands out like this and Greg will um, unmute you. If you have any uh, thoughts, insights, or questions about practice and how it might reflect. Um, I'm thinking about the going past your center to your hip piece and how with conversations about politics or things surrounding politics, how it feels like conversations are like bouncing right into each other's centers and what would happen if we could move it to the side a little bit. I think that's a great analogy. I love it. Yeah, what if we could just invite them to spiral around us a little bit and, and perhaps look at, look at the situation from a different point of view instead of cr crashing into each other. So wonderful, good analogy, thank you. Any other thoughts on the, this technique or anything about how Aikido reflects in our conversations with ourselves or with others? I've just been playing around with that notion of center and it's um, having to do with my expanding in so many directions from, from this core. And when I do that, there's that sense of I'm both sending and I'm receiving. And it's like the uke and nage, it's like, it's almost the same thing. These gestures we're making can be yes. giving, offering, or they can be, you know, open and receptive. And so in conversations, I'm being present and I'm kind of listening, but I'm sending some, something out and it's just that interchange and exchange. I love it. I mean, that's what we talk a lot about being inclusive and on the mat, how do I always include my uke? Um, they're always part of me. And that's why I always joke that I, I tell people don't blend because it's, it's redundant. We're already connected. We could just act as if. And so I take that feeling that we are connected and we can travel these lines together. You know, in the poem, we talked about the precision of the line and the cut. That's beautiful. Thank you. Any other thoughts or questions? I, th I think it's, it's, it's funny when we're on the mat or when I'm on the mat that I'm thinking like I'm, I'm doing the technique. Um, and I've, and I, 
you know, when we're without a partner, I realize even more I'm more grateful to have people to train with because it's actually helped me to orient much more than I ever thought. Um, does that make sense? Yes, it does. And it is, we're so fortunate when we can train with people in the flesh. And meanwhile, we can still practice the clarity of the forms that we can then bring back to the mat when we're able to do so. Because sometimes if we're not careful, our relationship on the mat is all about managing our partner. Mm -hmm. And so this times that to practice these beautiful moves, whether it's um, catching the strike or giving the strike, um, gives me that feeling of the beauty and the purity of the movement that then when I come back to the mat, I really want to hold on to that and not just hit my partner or manage my partner, but something that's more um, universal and esoteric, if I can bring that back to the mat. And one way to do it is by practicing doing the bokeh cuts, doing the, the movements, the leadership embodiment. Not everyone uh, has been using bokeh, some don't. I so say you can just use your hand and really be sure that you have a feeling, boom, that you're sending the energy out, that you're letting it run through you. And if we do that, use this time to do that, then we can, I think, bring um, more uh, beauty and clarity back to the mat with our partners when we do that. So I absolutely agree, Elizabeth, it's so much better when we can touch people. Meanwhile, how can we uh, grow ourselves? so that when we come back to the mat, we have more to offer. Any other thoughts? So kind of related to everything that we've said, but the, the uke portion, when we're doing it without having a nage, one of the things I've been noticing in the last couple of weeks of practicing that is I see where I capitulate too much on the mat, where I give in so completely to my partner, whereas if I practice keeping my center and standing up, I have better balance. And so outside of the mat, I would have better ability to engage in a positive way rather than just kind of folding and collapsing in a conversation. Nice, nice. Well, well said. And that's why things like paying attention to whatever the attacking hand is, whether in this case it's a yokoman, being sure that the other hand has presence and that when I am brought around, I'm using that hand a little bit to, to create that balance, to create that like guy wires or flaps on an airplane, it's present. It's not just hanging out there. So when I come back to the mat, that free hand is always helping me, always clarifying. So we can practice, um, when we're practicing that now, that sense of I'm striking, I imagine I'm brought around. This hand is really helping, it's present because I know this is being, this is being drawn. So how do I use this to balance that so I can stay light so I don't end up falling over, as you're saying. Mm -hmm. so that kind of thing can really help to bring the energy to the fingertips, for sure. Okay, so let's um, work a little bit with our uh, bokens. So um, if you have, don't have a boken, you can totally do this with your arm. And if you've got a boken, this would be a good time to grab it. I can see Ula had to probably go inside to get her bouquet. <laughs> and so such a nice picture of the nature there behind her. All right, so I'm assuming that most people have their bouquets, and if not, again, you can use your arm. So let's just take a moment and um, we'll bow our bouquets and taking our bouquets out. And if you don't have a bokken, you can use your hand. And what we're going to do is um, this little ritual practice that I've developed is I call stir the cosmic soup. So you can do this with your hand or you can do it with your bokken. So you've seen the videos, many of you of O Sensei. So we're going to stir the cosmic soup. We're going to make that spiral. And we're going to invite wisdom 
traditions from all places, all times, and all eons to come and support our intentions for good in the world. And then we're going to go lightning rod to heaven. Reach your hand or your bow can up and pull it into you. Huh. Nice. And then we're going to, as we've been doing in the past few weeks, Bo Sensei, in that first practice, I talked about his quote about joining body and mind. So to join our body and mind, those of you who've been doing it know that we're going to say out loud our intention to bring something into the world. And so it can be anything. Maybe it's a particular project you're working on. And for me, it's I, I wish to bring resilience and courage to people I'm working with. So that's my phrase that I'm going to use. And that's what my mind came up with, what I'd like to do. And then I'm going to get my body to energize that using the bow can. So we're going to stand and get ready to make our cut. And if you're just using your hand, you're going to raise the same. And for new people, it's elbow, wrist, tip. And when you go elbow, wrist, tip, send some energy out from that tip. Find a point through the wall. <clears throat> so we're going to say our intention. We're going to make a cut, say it, make a cut. Say it, cut, cut, and then we're going to end with a ki. So I'm going to say my intention. I encourage you to say it out loud so you can join your body and mind. I wish to bring resilience and courage to people in the world. And now I'm going to make a cut. I wish to bring resilience and courage to people in the world. Cut again. Cut. I wish to bring resilience and courage to people in the world. You're going to cut once, hey. cut again, and now make a big ki, a big yell. Hey! And just stand in it for a moment. Just like when the cook had finished cutting up the ox, he just stood there and let it soak in and let your body and mind join. All right, we're going to do it again. We're going to bring it up 5% more, more shiny, more light. Imagine the wind is coming through you. Aiki spirit is coming through you to help you put this out into the world, to energize it through all the cells in your body. Ready, and I wish to bring resilience and courage to people in the world. And I'm going to cut. Hey. I wish to bring resilience and courage to people in the world. Cut. I wish to bring resilience and courage to people in the world. Cut once. Cut again. Now a big ki. Hey! Nice. And let's do it one more time because threes are really good. So just get a little brighter, a little shinier. Let a little more come through you. Open yourself. Imagine you're like a colander. You're porous. Ready? And I wish to invite resilience and courage for people in the world. I wish to bring resilience and courage to people in the world. I wish to bring resilience and courage to people in the world. Cut once. Cut again. Big ki. Hey! Stand in it for a moment. Just let it run through you. Let it soak in. Let your mind and body connect with the energy and the intention. Okay. I'm going to put my bouquet to the side. The next I'm going to do is I'm going to do a four direction cut and it's not the one with the complicated footwork. It turns out to be six cuts. So if I'm doing it with my hand, that's fine. I'm going to cut and then I'm going to imagine that I'm raising my bow can. I'm going to pivot and cut. So I'm going to go through it like that. Um, I'll just show you for those who do not have a bow can. So I'm going to cut and then I'm going to pull it up over my head in my imagination, cut over my head. I'm going to step to the right, perpendicular, over my head, pivot and cut, over my head, cut. And then the last cut is a pivot back. So this particular footwork with the right foot forward is pivot, step with the right, pivot, step with the right, pivot, and then change feet. And for those of us who have bouquins, we'll use our bouquins. So let's just go through the form and then we'll add our, our intentions, our wishes. So we're going to cut, pull it over our heads and cut. Pull it over our heads, step with the right foot and cut. Pull it over your head, pivot and cut. 
Over your head, step and cut. Over your head, pivot, cut. That's going to be your last cut. So change feet so your right foot is forward again. And then I'll just go through it with the counting and then we'll add the words. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's going to be a big ki at the end. Change feet. All right. So let's say our intention, say it out loud so that it reverberates in the room and your cells of your body start to, start to connect to that. All right, here we go. I wish to bring resilience and courage to people in the world. One, two, three, four, five, six. Aye! Change feet. Let's do it again. Remember, we're really sending this intention, intention out in all directions. And we're really inviting energies from all places to support us. That we can support other people. Ready, Anne. I wish to invite resilience and courage to people in the world. One, two, three, four, five. Big ki -ai. Hey! Change feet. And again, I love three, so let's just do one more. Let's run some heaven and earth through us. Imagine there's a wind coming through you. Open your hearts a little bit and say your intention to do good in the world. I wish to bring resilience and courage to people in the world. One, two, three, four, five. Big ki -ai. Hey! Change feet. Take a moment. Just stand. Let it soak in. Nice, and let's put our both hands to our side for a moment. And let's just stand. And let's do a standing bow. And if you have your both hands, this would be a good time to set it to the side. So let's work a little bit with um, the Kokyu energy and then we'll have a couple minutes left for questions. So the coq throw again is going to be working that same part of the wrist that I talked about. I don't know if you can see it. It's really important that we're extending out through this part of the wrist. All right. So imagine that your partner's coming and they're going to hold your wrist and you raise your energy up, lighten up, straighten your legs a little bit and do that with your wrist. And when you do that, your uke is going to pop up. So you hold your hands out, your uke is going to come and touch you. You get light, and then you raise your wrists. And don't forget, you're extending out through here. Raise them up a little bit about eye level, and then you're going to make that cut. And that cut is going to be the throw. And when you make the cut, don't forget, you're really extending energy out. So they have something to fall on. Give them something to roll on. Don't just throw it away. Change feet. Imagine your uke is coming, they're going to take a hold of your wrists, you lighten up, and then you flick your wrists up, extending out through those parts of your wrists. Raise it up over your head, make a step, and cut. Okay, let's do it again, changing feet. So, your uke is coming just before they touch you, lighten up, take your energy up, and then flick your wrists and your fingers up. Raise your arms up. And when you make the cut, don't forget to make it the same way we do with the sword. Drop your elbows and then extend out. When our uke grabs us in this technique, we often push into our uke instead of lightening and then making that nice clean cut. We've talked a little bit about that thinness and the line and the cut when we're doing the yokamen, when we're doing the boken. So as we do this kokyo ho, Really the same feeling of the energy going out there, not pushing. Okay, let's look at the ukemi. So my nage is standing in front of me. I go to hold my nage's wrists just before I touch them. They put their energy up. I feel myself get light. Then they make the kokyu movement with their wrists. It pops my shoulders up, and that makes me light and very easy to throw. 
So I might start with a good sense of the earth and groundedness. And just as I come to touch my nage, they pop up and that pops me up. And then they raise their, um, their wrists and I feel my shoulders go up and then they make a cut and I wanna fall. So to imagine when I'm taking a kemi that I come in and I'm strong and I'm grounded, but as they get light, there's a feeling of lightness that flows through me too. And by the time I grab them, I'm already light. My shoulders are a little bit high. My weight is off of my heels. And then as soon as they make that cocu movement, it pops me up and I feel my center get light. And in my, my kemi, I'm giving myself to them. So when I do, I'm not attacking the ground. That's something to be careful of when we come in. Sometimes we grab the ground and then we're grabbing our uke. But what I recommend is instead of grabbing the ground, just be on the ground and put most of the energy towards your uke. So if they get light, it actually takes you off your heels a little bit. Let yourself feel how to get light as an uke. And that doesn't mean you're weak or loose or limp. It simply means that when you come in to grab, you don't put your weight down. Because if you do, you're actually attacking the earth as well as your uke. So you're splitting that attack. When you come in for your kemi, you want to touch, but as they get light, you let yourself get light too. And you know, I've talked about this before, there's a huge power, the power of lightness. When nage gets light, uke gets light. So let's um, make a little contrast on that. So um, everybody take a nice kind of wide palm knee and feel yourself really get grounded and try to be strong so that someone couldn't push you over. And when you do that, notice the muscles you're using in your thighs. I'm using a lot of muscles in my thighs and quite a bit of muscles in my core. Now, what I want you to do is put your hand on top of your head, take a, not a wide homie, a shorter, closer homie, pop your hand up and feel your energy come up. And as you stand this way, notice the muscles that you're using in your quads, in your thighs. I'm not gripping anywhere near as much with my quads, which means over time, I'm gonna have less pressure on my knees. Those of us who every now and then have a knee issue, when you grip the ground and you sink down, you're actually, do it again, grip the ground, sink down, get strong, not only your quads, but notice what's happening with your knees. I notice there's a lot more pressure on my knees. Now, when I pull my homie in a little bit, put my hand on top of my head, pop it up, I feel my energy get light. I don't have that pressure in my knees. So when I'm taking a kemi, I don't want to grip the ground. Um, unless I'm taking a kemi for a kid sense in a demonstration, he says, don't move. But um, hopefully I don't do that all the time because it's actually quite exhausting to do that. When I'm nage, I also don't want to grip the ground. I want to be able to receive the ground and, and be light and fluid. So let's just, um, before I take a couple of questions, one more time, standing in such a way where we're light and fluid, holding our hands out. Imagine our uke comes and grabs our wrists. Get light, flick your hands up, make that nice cut. And really focus at the cut that the energy is coming out through the sword blade. Give your uke something to roll on, again change homie. So hold your hands out. Here comes uke. Just before they touch you, let your energy come up. Flick your hands up. Make the cut. Now let's take the ukemi side. So I'm going to walk toward my nage and they get light just before I grab them. I can actually feel there's something in my core here that comes up a little bit. My shoulders are up. My breath comes in. And then when they throw, I take the exhale. And let's do one more time. Imagine they're offering again. I walk to them just before I touch them, they get light. I can feel the lightness move through my body. My shoulders go up. And then when they make the cut, my balance is broken, I make the fall. So I just wanna check in a little bit to see uh, if there are any more thoughts or questions on these two emphasis, this idea of the power of lightness how much more healing it is for our body, and then anything about the precision of really letting that energy flow through us and not just stop at our skin. 
or any other questions too, but those are the two pieces we've been focusing on. Any thoughts or questions? So my, my thought or um, sharing is uh, I've been as a um, principal of 400 students doing distance learning and I don't know if it's mystery, it's certainly not mastery and mystery is a really nice way of <laughs> saying it. And, and so the two words that have really coming up for me as the le a leader is I have to provide clarity and flexibility. Mm. And so the, cl the class, is, the precision is certainly the clarity and that lightness for me is really allows for that flexibility. Oh, how, how do I balance them both? That's so very you. nice. Yeah, I like that. Clarity and flexibility, that idea of lightness and precision. It's like, how do we find those balances of uh, soft and strong, all those mm -hmm. things that we need? And um, I would say these days, I'm really working on that lightness and not gripping the ground because the rug is being pulled out from under us quite a bit. So instead of trying to hold it, um, we could just move with it and readjust. And that's why, and the lightness is so much easier on my joints and my psyche. When I'm lighter, I smile more and I feel more resilient. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Alan. Any other thoughts um, on emphasizing this power of lightness or the precision of that, those cuts, those lines? Yeah, Wendy, um, I'm finding that as my, my role within my company is, is a lot of just sitting with people as they do their work, right? To kind of encourage them. Like a lot of times, like I'm noticing things are taking a lot longer to get done. And so sometimes I'm like, I'm happy to just help you, right? And a lot of times I'm just like present on a Zoom call and they get through wherever they were stuck and they hardly used me at all, right? It's just that presence. And so bringing that sort of sense of lightness and flexibility, as Alan said, for sure, right? Into, into these roles has been good. And I love the, the use of the word mystery within all this, right? Because we can't get to thinking about that future because there's still a lot of unknowns in that, which is a mystery, right? We, we don't know, but we have like what we have in front of us right now. We absolutely do. And how we meet with what we have when it comes at us, um, whether it's news or family or friends or people we meet on the walks and things like that. Um, I'm a big fan of working with lightness for myself. It really gives me <clears throat> a lot more uh, of the flexibility. When I'm lighter, I can adapt a bit more. Uh, and, and I also tend to see more positives when I'm, I'm physically lighter. It's good to have a light mind, but to be one of my things I've worked on for so long in Aikido is not to grip the ground, because I spent 25 years gripping the ground, mm -hmm. learning how to be strong and really hold that and do that. Mm -hmm. and my joints paid the price. And so it's been an ongoing practice to teach myself to physically lighten up, because that really changes my brain as well. Mm -hmm. And it's not that we, we don't want to be grounded, but I would say it's 50-50, heaven and earth. So 50% that centrifugal, that heaven, sky energy, and 50% letting the earth support us, rather than having it be mostly the earth supporting us. We're, we can be very much supported by the sky above us and by the heaven energy. It's, it, it's, a, it's a slightly different focus than I learned in the beginning, but it's been very helpful. So thanks, Greg. That was really uh, good to hear your you're supporting your group with lightness and flexibility. Thank you. Any other thoughts before we do a... One more. Um, so I have very heavy Aikido. I'm very grounded. I have a lot of earth and I have bad knees. And so I need to find this lightness. So you, you mentioned um, not having quite as wide a stance, so pulling your stance in a little bit. Is there any other practical thing that I can help myself practice letting go of the mat? Um, well, uh, in terms of imagination, what I do is I imagine that the energy is coming up through my body from the earth and out the top of my head, and I'm riding it. You know, um, where I live, we can watch the birds ride the thermals, and uh, you, they go up on the inside of the thermal and they float down on the outside of it, and they can do it for a long time without flapping their wings. So there's this centrifugal natural force 
<clears throat> so uh, some of it is just concentrating on that and paying attention to that sense of that centrifugal force. Um, over time, that start, starts to wake it up. The other thing is, as I stand or sit, put space between my ribs. So normally, if, if we stand or sit, there's kind of a um, compression in the ribs. Go ahead and just compress the ribs. That kind of like, okay, I'm going to be strong. I'm going to hunker down. And my ribs are a little more compressed. And if I put a little more space between my ribs, it starts taking my energy up my thighs a bit. Can you? So that's a concentration I can do. And then sitting, um, I like to put my hands on the back of my neck and just stretch my vertebrae. And imagine there's little clouds or cotton balls between the vertebrae. <laughs> and so as I do that, and then I stand, I feel there's much more spaciousness and lightness in me. So those are um, the two things I can do is make space between my ribs and put space between my vertebrae. And then in terms of just concentrating and finding attractive concentrations, like a double helix with the bird riding upward, that's attractive to me. So find whatever you can that's going to be attractive to you that has that sense of that spiraling upward. Um, and just concentrate on it for five seconds, 10 seconds throughout the day. And if you do, little by little, that whole world of lightness will start to show up. And then, of course, you just have to do it. But just do it for 10 seconds at a time. And I have to say, you know, when I was in my late 50s, my, particularly my knees and hips that would wake me up at night, I was in so much pain, my joints were so bad. And I'm in my mid-70s now, and I don't have anywhere near as much pain. And I attribute it to spending the last 25 years working on being light. So. Thank you. My, it's been very healing for my actual physical body. <laughs> Might help my brain, too. <laughs> <laughs> Might help our brains too. Okay. Anything else before we do a little sending blessings out? Okay. So as we sit or stand, let's just take a moment and um, let's go ahead and do that. Press down the top of our heads and pop our hands up so we lighten our energy. And just for a minute, straighten our arms and uh, and our fingers and just let some life force, some key Aiki spirit flow through our bodies. And let's send some good energy out into the world. And let's have an appreciation for our friends and training partners, the Aikido community that we know, and then the Aikido community that's all around us, some we don't even know. Yes. And then appreciation for all the people in our lives that have allowed us to train Aikido that have supported us and helped us. Appreciation for our teachers and mentors that have shown us and helped us along the way. And appreciation for O Sensei's vision. The whole idea of loving protection and unification of the universe with our spirits. Nice. And then just letting our arms float down and standing for a minute, remembering that we're held between heaven and earth. And we can imagine that we're porous like a colander. In fact, we are just vibrating energy. We're atoms. Atoms are nothing but vibrating energy. And letting all that energy flow through us and around us. And if we could be a little more noble, a little more awesome, and a little more shiny. What would that be like? Okay, let's bow out. Doma arigato gozaimashita. Arigato mashita. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. I appreciate it. It's been um, such a mystery watching all of this unfold over the weeks. So um, I appreciate everybody. And as always, if you need anything, um, feel free to email through the Dojo website. And um, I hold you in my hearts. My hands are on your backs. And I hope that before long, we'll be touching each other and training again in the Dojo.
Thank you, Greg, for hosting. I appreciate your um, uh, expertise and doing the tech. Appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to meet you. Good to see Thank you. you.